Hello and welcome to the channel. In this video we're going to look at calibrating the SI5351 breakout board using the Arduino platform. We'll look at the applications where the SI5351 needs to be calibrated and what happens if it's not. We'll also go through how to carry out the calibration routine, what test equipment you're going to need and finally we'll go through how to implement the calibration information into the Arduino code. So let's get started. So the big question here is, do we need to calibrate the SI5351 breakout board? And the simple answer is yes, if we want to produce accurate frequencies. This is a very basic sketch based around the library EtherKit SI5351 by Jason Mildrum. In the sketch, we are initializing the SI5351 and then we set the frequency and we do this by setting the frequency in Hertz, then add in two extra noughts. The two extra figures on the end basically equate to one tenth of a Hertz and one hundredth of a Hertz. And we want to produce that frequency on clock zero. And finally, we send the information to the SI5351 via the I2C bus and that's indicated by this function here which is update the status. So let's upload this and see what we get. This is a project that I've been building on my channel and it's simply to do with how to build and code a VFO based on the Arduino system. So we've got an Arduino Nano and we've got our clock uh, generator board here and that comes away here and we've simply got this connected to a frequency counter. So we've uploaded our code. Let's have a look at the counter. The counter is displaying a frequency of 10 megahertz, but we're high by nearly 1240 hertz. So it should be displaying 10 megahertz on the money, but it's not, it's high. So let's go back to the code and see if we can manipulate this in order to give us 10 megahertz on the money. Okay, so if you're new to the channel and you like this content, uh, please consider subscribing or, you know, hitting the like button as it really helps the channel. We're trying to grow the channel. So, uh, you know, thank you in advance for your support. Okay, so we'll be back in the code. So the most logical thing to do would be to correct the error in the frequency. And we know we were roughly about 1,240 hertz over. So if we subtracted that from this figure, we should therefore be on the money. So let's put this in here. Now I've done a bit of uh, playing around with it. So if we now upload that, to our Arduino yes you can see that we're now very close to 10 megs if you had an application where you only needed the clock generator to generate one frequency you didn't want it to move this would be fine because look what happens if we want to change this to 20 megs. So if we add an extra one on here and upload that. You can see we've got an, the errors back. And let's say we want to change that to 50 megs. Let's just put that one four in there let's upload that yeah you can see the error is it's increased even more so this method isn't any good if you wanted to sweep a wide range of frequencies and in my project which is a VFO and I want to accurately produce frequencies all over the spectrum that the SI5351 can produce, 
this method is no good. So we'll take a quick look at why this is happening and then we'll go through the calibration routine and show you how we can fix it. Okay, this is the block diagram of the clock generator I see. I've got this out of the uh, data sheet. And I'll just explain quickly, you know, quite high level how this is working. So we've basically got a crystal that sits on the outside here and it runs this oscillator. Now what happens is that frequency generated from the oscillator goes into one of these PLLs and what happens in here we multiply the frequency up to somewhere around between six I think it's 900 megahertz and then carrying on you've got this multi synth which I think it's got two layers of division in there so that divides the frequency down till we get the desired frequency you know we want and how it's doing it is quite straightforward uh, well I say quite straightforward I think it's quite a bit to it but uh, what's actually happening is straightforward so we've got the library that we've got on our Arduino and we tell it we want a, a desired frequency it goes away and does some calcs and it works out the multiplication factor here and the division factors here to give us our desired frequency so where's the problem well the external crystals are generally not that accurate so when we go into our off oscillator it's the slightly off frequency and what happens is as we multiply the frequency it exaggerates the error it makes the error bigger and then we go through more division but ultimately what it means is is that the frequency coming out isn't accurate so how to fix this there's a routine and basically I believe it's inside this oscillator there's some registers and we can address them and we can correct the frequency at this point and if we do that as it goes through its calculations on the Arduino and it sends the information up this will multiply this will divide and we'll get the correct frequency coming out here so that's basically it that's all we need to do so let's move on to the calibration routine okay let's get started with the calibration now as mentioned before we're using the etherkit si5351 library by jason mildred that's installed so the first thing to do is go up to file and we go examples and then we find etherkit here we go 51 5351 <laughs> even and what we do there's a the selection here we want the top one we want to get calibration so we click on this okay and that brings us to this sketch here now ultimately what this does it generates a frequency on clock zero and what it is we're looking for 10 megs so we're going to see our errors they're going to be there but what we do by pressing some of these keys and I'll show you exactly how to do that in a second we can actually alter the frequency and then in return once we've got it on frequency we can we get a calibration figure and we can use that in our code okay so you're going to need a frequency counter that's in reasonable calibration and has the facility ideally to go down and read to 100th of a hertz so the more accurate the counter and the higher the resolution you can actually read the better results you're going to get now another thing if you've got a counter that's got a high impedance you may have to put a 50 ohm load on there I've got a 50 ohm load set here I can just switch it on and off but that's the load impedance output that's required by the clock generator so it gives it something to work against okay so let's start calibrating okay so the first thing we want to do is upload this sketch to the Arduino where we've got the SI5351 so we hit upload and if we once it's uploaded yes uploading done so if we go to the top right hand corner here we've got the serial monitor ah adjust until your frequency counter reads 
as close to 10 megahertz as possible and once you finish we press Q and uh, that'll give us our figure so yeah if you've got garbled information here obviously just check it, that your serial monitor board rate is the same as this because this is obviously what we've sent to the Arduino and you can change it in the right hand corner here um, and then you should be getting clear information you've got this it means you're communicating this is coming back from the Arduino so everything is good at this point so if we press O and L O increases the frequency uh, of the clock generator by one kilohertz and if you press L it'll reduce it by one kilohertz and similarly with all these other frequencies and we can actually get down to um, one tenth of a hertz and then we can get down to one hundredth of a hertz resolution so the first thing obviously we sorry I'm coming away from the mic uh, so we're up 1237 so let's reduce that by a thousand so if we highlight the box here press L and then press enter yeah you can see we've shaved uh, a kilohertz a thousand Hertz from the frequency and we'll do the same again so we want to take down a hundred Hertz so that will be K so press K let's see what happens yep and let's do that again okay and then we want to get down to J which is 10 Hertz so let's shave 10 Hertz off it yeah, we can do that again and if we do that again yeah we're getting there so and if we go down in single Hertz which is we want to go down that's H that's H Okay, so we're at now 0.73 of a hertz or thereabouts high. Now it will wander. We'll talk about that at the end. Um, it's to do with the stability of the crystals. So we can bring that down by one tenth of a hertz. So if we hit G, and we can do that again. Now it does get a bit. One more time. Oh, that didn't do anything. Now this does happen. You can Oh yeah. Yeah, I think that's as good as we're gonna get it. So now we've got our frequency. Um we just go in here when we type Q and that will give us our what's that? So calibration factor is one two three seven five three so we need to make a note of that i'll just hit Control c and i'll just drop that into notepad here now if you play around with this i notice it does you know it doesn't always go up and down on the very fine um settings so you know you have to play with this it. just the way the library works but this will get us pretty much where we need to be okay so let's get back to our original program here uh, this is the basic setup so what we need to do to implement the code is simply in the setup we just need to put this line in here which is set correction and if we get notepad where did we keep it here we go so we've got a calibration figure here and I'll just put it in this point okay so if we now upload that to the Arduino and see what we're getting on the frequency counter
Well, yeah, it's slightly below 10 megs, but that's pretty much on the money. Uh, we are a third of a hurt down, but let, let's see what happens when we change this to 20 megs. So let's upload that. Yeah, we're pretty much on the money. Let's try 50. Now, it's always a bit, it looks a bit funny if it's slightly under because you see all the nines, but it, it, uh, trust me, that's pretty close. Upload this to our Arduino. This has got a new figure in here. Okay, so that's closer. That seems to be so we're high by well, about six one hundredth of a hertz, which is pretty on the money. So let's check the other frequencies. So let's go to let's try truck twenty megs. Yeah, that's uh, that's good. And let's try the 50. Now, remember, originally we were four kilohertz off. So let's do this again. Oh, hang on. Okay, that's f sorry, 40 megahertz. Let's try 50 megahertz. yeah so you can see the improvement it makes quite a dramatic improvement now you there is problems now i spoke about stability now you've got to remember these boards that we've got here are these cheap chinese boards they're, they're, it's the quality of the crystal they're not particularly stable uh to get better results you need something that's more you know a better crystal you can actually use uh temperature controlled oscillators now i built equipment with temperature controlled oscillators with very good temperature coefficients and stability down to two parts per million and the results you actually get with the SI 5351 are actually quite impressive okay well I hope you found this uh, interesting and of help um, let me know how you get on if you get problems leave it in the comments and uh, oh just like to say thanks to all our new subscribers and I will see you in the next video.